everybody. Welcome to Everything in Potteration, because sometimes the internet can be too much. I am Robert, and I'm just one more thing. I'm Daly, and I'm another thing, too, if you will. I'm Colin, and I'm yet another thing, I guess. Technically, I'm the last thing, so I, I am the one more thing. You guys are just mm. an existential crisis right at the top of the show, you guys. That's that's what I live for, man. I, I was actually going to crack a joke, something about, like, Pax Pox or something. And but then I realized that was kind of in poor taste because, you know, there's other pox going around. That's what they call it. The other pox. The other pox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, it's it started well like known. late 2019. The other pox. Yeah. The Delta Pax pox. Is yeah. What we're dealing with now. <laughs> and to be fair, I think that joke would age like fine milk in like two weeks. We'll find out. Mm. Um, oh, shit. Yep. Your tests, guys. Mm hmm. So this week we're going to be talking about the whole, as Jeff Grubb puts it, summer game mess. Now that summer is behind us and the leaves are changing color and I know fall isn't until September 21, but fuck you, it's fall pretty much. Do you remember? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, summer is over and that means the summer games conferences are over. And you know, back in the day it used to be like E3 and Gamescom and maybe a few things in between, but this year has been... Well, in last year, kind of, too, but this year has felt like just it's been a lot. There have been a lot of conferences to the point where there are <laughs> there's one today. If you're listening the day we go live, there is one today from PlayStation where we get to see their hot new games like Forza Horizon 5 and the Halo Mr. Chief collection. Yeah, which is odd because actually PlayStation is probably the smallest offender when it comes to what we're talking about. Because they've basically been radio silent since they since they launched their console when it comes to conferences. Yeah, and I mean, to be fair, I I do feel kind of bad for them because every time they do open their mouth, it's like to put a foot in it. Because uh. <laughs> they're like, yeah, we're going to, we promise PlayStation 4 will upgrade to PlayStation 5 easy. Also, please pay us more money for, for Horizon Forbidden West if you want both versions, please. Thanks. Yes, I'm forking over my money just so that I can get alloy in uh genshin impact <laughs> that's true I fucking oh, you, you can only have her yeah if you play on playstation i have listen, not played on playstation but i'll i'll fucking do it l listen guys daily has a problem we might I need do. to have an intervention soon you know, this is what I love about gamers, not the gamers, but people who play video games. Here's what I love about them is that everyone brings their own frame to the table, right? You know, Colin is like, oh, super nostalgia. Oh, I grew up on PlayStation. I'm like, you know, JRPGs are pretty cool, I guess. And Daily's like, but how can I play it in Genshin? That's the bold <laughs> stance she takes is how can I play it in Genshin Impact? You, you're giving me a Halo. When is Master Chief in, in Genshin Impact? <gasps> oh my gosh. He would be a cool... Oh, he would be a five-star. I'm not sure. What would his element be? Gun? <laughs> Just <laughs> <Dude>. gun? <laughs> he would be the first gun. Uh, yeah. We've been waiting on Dendro characters since the game launched almost a year ago, and instead we'll get gun first. Yes. Wait, are they seriously trying to turn the Genshin Impact into f what Fortnite is now? I feel like Fortnite has a new character coming to it pretty much every week now. It's It's yes. got to be at least once a week, I swear to God. I would... St I, we wait so long for the new characters to launch, Colin. There's another two weeks on this banner, and I'm waiting for my waifu. Daily yeah. in the corner in the fetal position, just rocking back and forth until I'm saving my primo gems. Mm -hmm. While she shows uh, her credit card at the screen. Yes. So to bring it all to the summer game mess, I do want to play <laughs> a little quiz with you all that I think will be very Ugh. fun for no one in this room right now, but for the people listening, it'll be very fun for them. That's my hope. I have pulled up uh, a non-comprehensive list of conferences that happened over the summer and i'm gonna name them and if you remember literally anything from it speak up okay okay that's, that's all the right. game that's all right game. i'm a i'm a gamer girl i got this yeah and if you win you get aloy and genshin impact <gasps> oh fuck oh, shit <laughs> I, and, it, and it, this is gonna be interesting too because i i took to the philosophy after only so many of these conferences or i'm just like dude you know what? I, it's going to be like a basketball game. I'm just going to wait until it's over and just check the fucking score because I it's like it's not even worth it anymore. So Saturday, June 5, 
three months ago. Indie Live Expo. That one game where mm-hmm. you're a family running away from aliens who invaded. It's like Somerville or something like that. Was that there? I don't. I even I. I fucking it's, don't. It sounds like it could be, huh? Yeah. I, I, could, I could throw out any assortment of of indie games at you right now, and it could be like, yeah, maybe maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Thursday, June tenth, Summer Game Fest. Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest. The Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. So oh, that, yeah. Elden Ring. Yeah, it was a pretty high profile one. So I think that was that was fairly easy. I think that's also when Green we found out alloy. <laughs> I'm working, guys. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> because that was serious and not at all a joke. Um, I think that was also when Death Stranding Director's Cut was announced, right? <gasps> I have I have questions about that oh, uh, for you okay. later, Robert. Oh, not now? After I win. Okay. Al- <laughs> <laughs> well, that, was the, that was the last thing, I think, too, wasn't it? The last thing uh, was Elden Ring. Because I remember Keeley, he was very oh, excited, right. right? He was, you know, like, I'm so, I, I fucking did it, man. This is my thing. Same day, June 11th, the IGN Expo. Was that there- where it, I remember the graphics looked very Persona, and so we kept expecting Persona news, and then there wasn't, unless it, that was when they said, nope, no, nope, never mind. I'm, I'm that, that's a different that one to conference. myself. That's, that's a, a different, different conference. Mm-hmm. When we had Persona news, man, man, Daily is fucking playing to win. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess I want. I have Please. every four star in Genshin. I'm gonna keep getting. Wait, is Alloy a five star? She doesn't I, look that. I'm not gonna use her. I just want her. Wow. <laughs> I want her on my wall in my I collection. Need to, I need to collect her to throw in my digital shelf and fucking forget her. Yeah. Yeah. I need someone to clip out that clip of Daily saying, like, I just want to, I just want to, I just want her. I don't want to use her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no context. No, absolutely none. Uh, IGN Expo, there is probably some, I, you know, I bet there was people from IGN saying words on that. Mm, you were right. I'll give you that point, Colin, just because you need one at least. <laughs> uh, you're finally on the board. Um, Saturday, June 12th. The morning of E3, we're, we haven't even hit E3 yet. Morning of E3, uh, the Wholesome Games Direct. Snacko. Yep, that was that's one. A, that's yeah. a kitty. That's a kitty game. Yeah, it was like it's like cat, Animal Crossing. I just yes. that is Animal Crossing as well. I mean, like you play <laughs> as a cat. <laughs> you do some planting. Yeah. Sometimes it's pixel art. Sometimes it's three D. It's cute. I, all right. Well, I'll hand it to you daily because. <laughs> <laughs> Hand <Yeah>. over alloy. <laughs> <laughs> Devolver Digital, June twelfth. Now this one, I know. I told you. I told you all about it in this very room, in this very space. There was like a long skit, but I don't. I remember talking about the skit. I don't remember talking about any of the games though. I'm blank. I am seriously blanking out. I don't know. <laughs> so Shadow Warrior Three is probably one of the bigger ones there. I think they mm. showed off like a samurai, two D samurai, black and white game called Yomi, and uh, they sold off an NFT, a non fuckwithable tape, where they recorded their entire presentation on a VCR tape. Ah, uh, yes, it. yes. Oh, perfect. Yes. How many? So wait, how many of these are there? Oh, we've been going we, for like, tw- like ten minutes, fifteen minutes we're already. Still going. Okay, now my E3 God. starts. Oh, All right. God. Yeah, I told you there was a lot. I feel like this little quiz show is helping illustrate the fact in a very I mean, fun yeah, way. Yes, it is. Okay, Ubisoft Forward, June 12th. You know, um, besides besides the sexual misogyny, assault, and manipulation allegations. There, I think there was uh, Riders Republic there and mm-hmm. some Tom Clancy shit that wasn't Splinter Cell and some <laughs> Far Cry stuff that we've seen we've seen far cry 6 about 80 times at this point and it, yeah. it never seems like it's ever going to come out yeah those are all safe bets i feel like was that where they showed off tom clancy's x defiant yes was, was that it or was that later fuck <laughs> no that was it because they talked yeah. about it and they're like this it's just ubisoft call of duty We'll give that Ubisoft point to Colin because he pulled Tom Clancy out, which, you know what? That's a safe <laughs> he bet. He his name. <laughs> yeah, it's a safe bet with any Ubisoft thing. All right. Day two of E3. <laughs> the Xbox Bethesda Showcase. This, this one's pretty easy, I think. What? Uh, is Skyrim this... in the stars. Yeah. Starfield. 
Starfield. Yeah, that was probably the big one. The uh, advertisement that tells me that they need to update their engine because good God. Uh, Square Enix. E3. Chaos. Uh, <laughs> chaos. I'm Final Fantasy. Chaos. I don't think chaos. he's actually. No, we didn't see anything about Final Fantasy 16. Mm-mm. Oh, that's a fucking other thing, though. Tokyo Game Show is later this month. Oh, my too. God. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's historically always been in September. So it's like, OK, it never no quantity. It never ends. Mm-mm. So next on the list is Future Game Show. And I'm going to be honest. I don't remember. Nope. I do remember a thing from this one. I do. But do either of you two remember anything from the Future Game Show from the second day of E3, June 13? A futuristic. Game. Future is now old man. Gif. Uh, there was a lack yeah. of VR, <laughs> is my guess. No, they did have a VR experience for the future game show where you can walk around a virtual show floor. But I think they showed off Lake at that future game show. The game okay. where you can play a mail person and you deliver mail. I yeah, that yeah. actually looks fun, and I want to play that. Yeah, so that, I think that was shown there. Okay, so E3 day three. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> there's <is> just <laughs> there's just a lot here, so I'm just gonna name all of them, just like rapid fire. And if anything jumps out to you, fucking chime in because otherwise it's gonna be dead air for a while here. Take Two Interactive, Mythical Games, Freedom Games, Razor, Capcom, Verizon, and Television. Then there's gonna be DLC for uh village but we don't have they didn't have anything to show they just showed the same base gameplay mm-hmm. point oh for god yeah the capcom was yeah capcom was really bad it was just street fighter and then village is getting dlc yes and there was something else that i'm forgetting that was probably pretty <laughs> insignificant well great ace attorney which is very good but ah. it's also like that game was coming out in like two weeks after e3 so it's like and it was already know. out in japan yeah, yeah it's just it the been out. localization okay e3 day four nintendo uh oh that's where we got i mean we saw more stuff about skyward sword is hd there? Uh, mm-hmm. this is actually pretty good this is probably like the best part of e3 arguably is this where we found out more about pokemon legends at rcs or no that was a separate that was, direct that was Later. a direct that right weeks ago yeah yeah um the rest of these i i mean bandai namco i don't remember they showed one game do you remember what it was is that sifu are they doing sifu no no they're doing sifu that was i think i think sifu was at one of the future game shows maybe or maybe opening night live (sighs) okay so that's that's all of e3 kind of are we caught up for e3 right yeah and then there was that EA, there was like a week of EA events toward the end of July, right? Does anyone remember anything from those? I think there was one specifically that was like a news showcase thing. I think you can do manicures in The Sims now. <laughs> Maybe. I, I cannot. Facts. Cannot I don't know. Verify. <laughs> I know there's, there's the whole the Homestead update DLC. Yeah, for, yeah. For Sims. Yeah. Colin, I'm surprised you you haven't because like this is like all you for the EA stuff. Yes, I don't remember a fucking thing, dude. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Dead uh, sp- uh, Dead Space. A- yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't watch. I see. I didn't watch that either. I just watched the stuff that came out afterwards. Right. Yeah. Well, so that was their one more thing at the end of July. Right. Right. And then we jumped to August, which was just last month. And I, I don't remember. I don't think there was much early August, right? The, mm. the next big thing I can think of is the Xbox showcase from like two weeks ago on August 24th. For yes. Gamescom? Yeah, the one. It wasn't officially explicitly for Gamescom, but it was like right before Gamescom, if I remember right. Part yeah, and it, it was really well weird then. because they didn't have they didn't have Halo there at their own conference. Yeah. And they gave it to Jeff fucking Keeley for some reason. Mm hmm. Okay. So you remember the opening night live thing. So that's a point for you. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of what Microsoft showed off, I'm trying to remember. It was. Um, I, they had that longer Forza 
five thing that looks really cool ah yes yeah Forza oh, the, five and that's where we got the forza controller and, yeah the controller and then we also got uh wait is that where we got the halo infinite controller and xbox i think and then keely's opening night live for gamescom was the day after august 25th colin already got one with the halo the halo stuff either of you remember anything else from opening night live from literally two weeks ago saints row mm -hmm. uh, and this is yeah. the one i have questions about oh okay good yeah let's go so i never played saints row and i wasn't uh in the vicinity of anyone that was playing it at the time that it was uh at its apex mm -hmm. it looks the new game looks very different right yes does it look like the like objectives are similar though are we about to get in some Saints Row discourse? I don't know, because I'm like, I thought it was like a, a game about like being kind of like doing what you do in GTA RP and like you make gangs and then you go yeah. and do gang shit. I mean, it's not that you like make a gang. You already like the gang is whole the building of the gang is part of the story. It's not like this, you know, thing that you kind of do it in different ways depending on how you play it's all really tied mm. to the story right but it yeah i mean i i think the new saints row looks similar in terms of like the things you're gonna do in the game right like it, it looks a lot like saints row 3 basically okay mm -hmm. and then the capital g gamers got a hold of it um yeah they got mad and they got mad because it feels like this is this isn't this isn't my opinion the opinion of these people on the internet we're just like it's too hashtag millennial hashtag zoomer is it because like, like the principal characters are younger because they did strike me as like they're younger these, these crazy kids running around i want yeah. the helmet that the one guy has whether it's a neko <laughs> yeah i mean it, it basically is into the discussion about like they're making this game political and they're talking about like doing this crime shit for to pay off their student loans and stuff like that. I, I, I don't know. It, it just seems like such mediocre, com like dumb complaints to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a mix of I mean, because, you know, generally humans don't like change. Right. Well, <laughs> but the reaction to it is just it feels very overblown because it's essentially because uh, this new Saints Row is a, is a reboot right not a like it's not saints row five or whatever right um, and the reboot for one that's already in and of itself is gonna cause some people to be unhappy right especially because saints row four ends on a cliffhanger from what i remember the only the only valid criticism like the only somewhat valid criticism i heard about it was that it felt a little too much like what ubisoft has been going for with like Watch Dogs two. Mm. and like uh what's writer's republic and so that that sort of vibe where it's just like haha -ha, lol random uh hashtag relatable kids i did of. i did get the watchdog vibes as far as like we're all on our cell phones and we're like yeah i have targeted sight i have eyeballs on the merch mm -hmm. yes yeah i'd make a great gangster guy <laughs> yes you yeah. would yeah and just very similar aesthetic to like the dudes wearing the goofy mask and everyone's ki kind of like a little bit of a punk thing going on but doesn't fully commit to it like I, yeah. I, you know i don't even know how to like put words to that aesthetic but you know what i mean by that right well i think yeah. the, the biggest the rally cry that i've seen people say like the people who don't like the new saints row is essentially hashtag not my saints row and one of the big tenets of that is uh they just don't look like gangsters was the vibe like they look like young hipsters not gangsters right mm. and i agree but also when's the last time you saw a legit gangster in real life run around with a big ass purple dildo sword to beat the shit out of you with it and then pull out his dubstep gun to literally wub wub you to death. Like Saints yeah. Row 3 was super not gangster in that way that they're meaning it either. 
Yeah, I agree. And uh, that's why that's where I'm confused is like it, it should just be like Saints Row is just goofy, wacky, randomness, fucking nutso for the sake of nutso, like absurdist comedy, mishmash, okay. colorful, vibrant. Yeah, it's like that sort of thing. Because as someone totally unfamiliar, I've been getting two stories of one where it's like, this is a very serious and elevated story. <laughs> Uh, okay. It's very gritty, and no, then on the get, other side is just the no. ridiculous shit. You get a gun that that shoots sharks that attack people. Yeah, like, I, okay. this is what we're talking. We're talking uber video gamey well, absurdist comedy like ridiculousness. Well, so that's the thing that might be confusing, right? Is that Saints Row one, one and two were more of that serious gritty, like they want to be GTA, and then Saints mm. Row three they were like, but what if you had a dildo weapon? And then from I there, think about that all the time. Yeah. So and then and then Saints Row 4, <laughs> you're the president of the United States, literally the president of the United States. And then you're in the Matrix and you use your superpowers in the Matrix to save the real world. OK, if I had known that. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, watching the trailer would have made a lot more sense where it's like he's taha. He talked about making carne asada before mm -hmm. after after taking down gang members like here i think this this paints the picture very well is that i, I don't remember if it's i think it's the beginning of saints row 4 um there's like someone's about to launch a nuke like a big nuclear missile and you climb onto the missile and then you're surfing it as it's flying through the air to disable it and i don't know if this is what actually happened or if my brain did this but i am 80 percent sure aerosmiths don't want to miss a thing is playing while you're doing that oh perfect yeah that's the level of silliness this is and the fact that so many okay. people are angry about it like come on what are you doing yeah okay it, it's not meant to be that serious yes maybe they're worried that's that right. with all the new graphics they won't be able to afford songs like aerosmith's don't don't want to close my eyes mm -hmm. so clearly there's been a lot happening this summer almost I, very much too much way too much going on right and then today i'm just as excited as you are probably to fucking watch the playstation showcase where we get to i don't, I don't even know what we're gonna see god of war who knows For, I, forbidden I, west is delayed right officially fe february 22 yeah it's gonna be the same that yeah. the buff of the wild do comes out wouldn't that be hilarious whoa that would be great <laughs> <laughs> no uh, i mean cory barlock's like fucking zip the lip lock the key and throw or lock, lock his lips and then throw away the key like he's he's not saying a fucking word so <laughs> like we don't know we have no idea if god of war is going to be there i've heard rumblings that it's not that allegedly it might not be but i really hope it is because that's what i'm really looking forward to i i hope it's knack three i hope it's just an oh hour my god. of knack three that's with the power of the playstation 5 finally <sighs> knack in his true form um, and then toward the end of this month, uh, starting September 30th, is the Tokyo Game Show. So the summer of games isn't over even as it turns into fall, right? So overall, like gut check, what is one thing you're most excited about from, from, summer, from the summer game show that you've learned that you can pinpoint and say, I learned this at that show and that is the thing I am most excited about? Okay, I remember Slime Rancher 2, but I don't remember which show it was from. I was just blinded by my love for the bat slimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't remember what show that was from, but Slime Rancher 2! I, I think Opening Night Live. Or the Summer Game Fest, the, the other, key, the Keeley one from June. I'll have to go back to my tweets, because I know I tweeted, like, just all caps, Slime Rancher 2. Mm -hmm. Man. I am very much, I mean, Advance Wars 1 and 2 would be really cool because Advance Wars is one of those games where, like, I always hear about it, especially if you're in the retro gaming community or the collecting community. People talk about Advance Wars and GTA all the time. So the fact that it's more accessible now is is great. Um, but I feel like I'm I'm missing something huge and it's really going to eat away at me. It's definitely not No More Heroes 3. That the Elden well. Ring. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah, it's Elden Ring. Yeah, it's Elden Ring. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thank like you, from, missing... from? I didn't. From which from 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 software the the get the, the Jeff Keeley opening the, night live shit was that it yeah 
the summer no. game fest not opening night wow. live yeah wow. right, okay, yeah that's the thing right you see keely twice and you're like i just i can only take one keely a season and, right you know what <laughs> give, give it like what four months from now we're going to see him another time a third time before the year's out because we have the game they, awards still. the game awards yeah everyone should just have him like he should just make the circuit he should be at every show he'll be our our gamer president yes our representative our uh ambassador if you yeah. will you know I, it's funny too because jeff keely is just as much of a gamer as the rest of us because it's so funny watching him during those presentations when he like you clearly can tell he's just like faking his excitement for whatever he's talking about to hurry up and get to the yeah. one announcement he's really excited about i you know he's I mean like this... yeah yeah that was really cool good look at this thing but now look at this yeah i mean this with all due respect he's a fucking nerd and i love that <laughs> yeah um... no i love i love jeff don't get me wrong <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll hail jeff but so i don't want to sound like a debbie downer right because it's like on one hand the fact that there are so many cool games out there that it it necessitates this level of conferencing to let mm. people know about them, that sounds like a good thing. But does it almost feel like maybe, a, is it a good problem to have or is it a problem that is worrying you guys? That now there's just so much content out there to consume that it's hard to keep up. Well, hmm. I, I think it's, it's a little complicated because dude we're i mean we're everything is so accessible now that it's it's just so easy to catch up on anything you know i mean it's it's hard due to the volume of information right but if there's anything that maybe you missed i mean you could easily just pull it up and like figure out what the hell it was that you missed and and in a really short recap and it's and it's that easy however if you're someone like me in the past who like you know e3 season comes around it, it's 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 the gamer super bowl you know, yeah. it's it's you're sitting down for those three or four days over that weekend or whatever in June and you're watching all the conferences. You know, you have the Nintendo are the, tackling each other. Yeah, right. the, yeah. exactly. Nintendo, <laughs> Microsoft and uh, PlayStation, you know, they have the big conferences and then you have like Squeenix and and Ubisoft and EA. They have theirs, too. Those are like the, the six really big ones. And then the PC Gamer show on top of that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd watch all of them and I would like catch up on all the what, what's going on. And then the otherwise you'd have basically the game awards and that was it. Like it was super easy to keep track of. It was fun to sit down and watch live, but to have all the events that we have now is it's, a, it's exhausting. Like you yeah. just, there, there is literally not enough time to keep track of it all. Um, and I, I think a, a big part of that too is like, I'm, I'm actually really happy that it's actually given more spotlight to indie games. And that's one of the positives to me about it. Um, because so many, so many more of them have gotten the spotlight. So many more of them have been in game of the year talks in the past couple of years. And that's also, also due to COVID, right? Because so many big games are getting pushed that a lot of the indie games are kind of filling in those gaps for new releases. Um, mm. you know, the forgotten city is like a huge game this year. I think it's going to be game of the year talks based on what Robert was saying with him and him seeing the discourse, right, Robert. And I mean, like, I, I really, really like the game. I'm not sure how game of the year it's going to be just because it seems to be flying under the radar a bit. I see. But yeah, I mean, so that's that's cool. I'm glad that that's happening. I mean, Hades won a lot of game of year the game of the year awards last year. By the way, if you're Sirens, Sirens are on our on our, on our end. It's the there, gamer um, police. It's, they're, they're here coming, to coming after you. <laughs> um but yeah, so ultimately I think it's exhausting and I don't necessarily care for it, but at the same time it's one of those things where it's like, okay, then just then then don't watch it, because mm. uh, you also have things like the Band Dynamco and the Capcom shows that felt like now now these publishers feel like they need to show something, even if it's stuff that that they've already announced. And, <gasps> you know, okay, they I'm stay glad relevant. you you bring up that part because it was really like I'm more remembering the fact that when they said that there was going to be Resident Evil Village DLC, I'm more cognizant of the fact that it's like they didn't have anything to show for that and they were showing gameplay just from the base game mm -hmm. like if they had just done like a teaser screen or just like there will be more like a tweet even i would just be more me remembering like oh i got more stuff to look forward to yeah. so it's like a double-edged sword of like i think when we have this summer games mess you're going to just remember the games that you want to play versus 
otherwise anything else that you're remembering you're gonna be like oh because that like was a lackluster show or yeah uh the show that was cringy or like mm. wow there was a lot of shows or like wow keely was there i remember that <laughs> so daily are you positing that if you don't remember a game from the summer you are not excited to play or you're probably not excited oh shit no because i know there's so much shit i've forgotten because if that's true colin you you fucking hate elden ring you haven't played it i mean you fucking you don't even want uh, that yeah, shit elden, garbage elden ring is terrible oh god miyazaki please forgive me i didn't mean that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, you're not gonna be allowed to play it now daily I, I i i hear you though because like i think one of my favorite means to come out of COVID times is uh this could have been this could have been an email yep yep <laughs> and and it's so fucking true for like 80 percent of things that happen on the daily no no pun intended I'm daily. daily um i guess like it ultimately comes down to like i don't know how much i care about like the sh the shows like I'll get excited the day of and be like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna make sure that I have that in the background, mm -hmm. so I can see what's announced and react on Twitter with everyone else." But I, it's it is a mess. Yeah, it all muddles together at the end of the year. So I think on uh, how to put this. So I did watch quite a majority of these um, shows. Right, not all of them. Because again, there's a lot, and and you know I love indie games, but there are a lot of small indie game, uh, like little presentations that have been going on throughout too. And it's just at some point there's too many, right? Like it's hard to keep up. But I think about the Razor keynote that I fucking saw at E3, right? Because for one, the pr the presenter he had an amazing like just booming. Like I, I if he had a podcast, I'd listen to it just to hear him speak. That's the level of like good voice he had, right? But Ooh. it felt like a show that straddled the line between like for shareholders and for consumers, right? Because it was basically like here's our new products, and yes, we want you, a future you know Razer laptop owner, to be excited about it. But also, like, to our shareholders, this is why you should keep investing in us, because we have the Blade 14 that's going to, you know, revolutionize the gaming experience, whatever, whatever, right? And it makes me think of, like, CES, Consumer Electronics Show, right? When's the last yeah. time any of you have thought, I can't wait to watch CES this year? Not, right? Not yeah. even once. But when you hear about like oh the new samsung phone got announced or oh that well that's probably not fair because samsung always does their own event but, you know like oh there's a new lg tv or lg monitor that was revealed at ces you didn't learn that because you watched every hour of ces and saw it you learned it because there was a bunch of nerds out there called journalists who were at ces or covering ces report on it and then say okay here's the big thing right here here's the, mm, the shit mm. took care about right and i feel like these conferences are trying to still be important enough for consumers to watch but are unfortunately getting to the point where they kind of need to be another ces basically i'm asking us to reverse engineer e3 because that's kind of what we're doing is just to have all of the shit on a show floor somewhere for journalists and and nerds and influencers to go there figure it out and say okay microsoft was there but like here's the three big games you need to know or like here's this is a tweet yeah so then the journalist can send you the thing that could have just been an email instead of you having to sit there and watch people dance for just dance 2022 yeah yeah that'd be that'd be good wouldn't it i mean the thing about it though is i mean we're getting that a lot of that anyway even with the current format you know like i mean because i would say that as a consumer as as a i don't know as a, as a gamer um <laughs> as a gamer uh i like to see the, the more nintendo direct style stuff where it's like we have we have this presentation that's cleanly put together boom 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 here's the games here's the release dates if we have them whatever and it, it shows over that's it now if everything could be done that way that'd be great you know because it's super simple it's concise and if i decide not to watch them because there's too damn many I have plenty of outlets and social media to refer to later if I want to get the news. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing, right? Is that CES is not, to my understanding, is not like 
this big show for you to sit down and watch, right? Like right, it's right, purely right. You're totally right. just it's purely just let's see what you know you the journalists and what YouTube has to say, right? Like what's the cool thing to watch out for there? And yeah. in some ways, I'm feeling like okay, so yes, it's it's nice to sit down, watch a 30 minute Nintendo Direct, and watch Reggie do a meme, right? Like that's great, and it's fun for like Nintendo super fans. I miss him. Same. But then when you couple that with, oh, you can watch Nintendo after watching the Sony conference, the, the Microsoft conference, the Ubisoft, the, all these other fucking conferences, and now you can get your little Nintendo snack. At that point, it's kind of like, I don't know, just send me the tweet. Send me, let me know what the big thing is. At least that, that's how I'm feeling from like a mm. consumer's pr perspective, right? Is like, I don't want to sit through two hours of games that I don't care about as much to then yeah find out when my most hyped game of 2022 is coming out right like for me as a as a you know semi journalist for games journal right like you know that's that's part of the gig and of course i'm excited about it because i love video games and it's what i do but for the average consumer i can't imagine you know i, I think about the twitch chats how fucking all of them are just spamming GTA 6 or like, oh my God, who gives a shit about this? Uh, Nobody <laughs> likes this. And it's wow. like, well, if you don't like it, why the fuck are you sitting here and watching it? Well, if I could push back on that a little bit. So, well, firstly, I don't think there, I think there's a part that I, I don't quite understand, I guess, from, from your, your reasoning there is that like, so if I understand you correctly, you're saying that like, you'd, you'd rather have like all the stuff on a show floor somewhere and then you'd report on it. And boom, done. That's it. Right. Like there's not there doesn't need to be any necessarily any press conferences or any it, of that stuff. Secondary well, moderated source versus from well, the horse's mouth. Yes, but because the volume of it all right now feels like it yeah. necessitates it. Like if this were just a normal E3 where you could count on like 10 to 12 conferences, that's it. And that way they could all have their room to breathe in the PR space amid the the rest of PR that happens in the weeks that aren't E3, I feel like that would give these stories a lot more breathing room and these games would get a lot more mind space for the people who would want to consume them. But as it is right now, it just feels like this nebulous, like everything fucking happened over the summer that I feel like I would remember it better had a majority of these things been at some media event and then oh, journalists came out and said, hey, here's... Here's the things to care about. Here's the best Nintendo games coming out soon. Here's the yeah. best Sony games, etc. So all you're really saying is just like take the stuff, the, the presentations that we're getting now and essentially just consolidate them. Yeah, basically. OK, yeah. OK, well, I can get behind that more because I thought what what you were saying before was like, you know, just have like a show for we can go see the stuff, whatever. And it's like done deal. Boom. Um, but like so I was just like, well, I mean, there's I don't to me, there's not at least from a consumer standpoint, there's not that big of a difference between that and like just having the presentations happen and then the journalists reporting on them afterwards you know because mm. from a reader standpoint there's like i mean it doesn't really make a difference to me you're still telling me what happened or what they have to show you know it may right. happen yeah, on a different timeline it, but it happened across five months versus two weeks right well i and to be like i can get behind the whole like we should consolidate these absolutely like i can get behind that um I'm just saying that, like, you know, whether I hear about them from a show floor or hear about them from a presentation from a consumer standpoint, that doesn't really make a difference to me. You know, mm -hmm. now, if I want to hear more details about it, maybe like these journalists do get on the show floor with whatever it is that this thing that was announced during the conference and gets like hands on with it, it gives a preview or like talks about it more in depth. That's great. And we get all that stuff anyway. Um, so I don't know, at least to me, Robert, I, I, I feel like from a reader standpoint, like it's just not going to make that much of a difference. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking more of like from a viewer standpoint too, right? Like the people who would sit there and watch all the conferences who think like, yeah. Oh, you know, I, I can't wait to find out the thing that I really want to find sure. out. The right? thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The enthusiast right. level stuff. And I mean, the, those conferences aren't really going to stop though. As long as those, those companies, you know, they want to have their minute in the spotlight is really mm. what it boils down to. You know, they, they want all eyes on them focusing only on them because obviously if it's just journalists on a show floor somewhere the attention is very spread out right oh so i'm like, sure it's nice to be like hey we're we're trending mm. right that's what i'm because saying because of our conference today 
Yeah, because I'm. I mean, for like half the day after a Nintendo Direct, if not the whole day, that's like all people can talk about on Twitter and whatnot. So, Mm -hmm. well, I think I can kind of trace it back to two major trends. Like the the reason we're having all these conferences be the way they are, I can trace it back to two trends. One is the Game Awards itself. Jeff Jeffrey Keeley's Game Awards. Jeff is at the center of everything. (laughs) Well, I say that because it's called the Game Awards, right? I think. But I think today, many people would agree that it's kind of called E3 2 with some game awards. Electra Boogaloo. Yes. Yeah, 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 aka the Keelys. Right. Well, my point being is it's, it feels like it's more reveals and world premieres than it is game awards or celebrating yeah. the games that have come out in the past year. It does still feel mm. like a celebration of video games, but I feel like it's become more forward looking than yeah. the first year right that yeah so, which absolutely. is funny because it should be more of like a as an award show like here's all the great games from the past year but i do rely on like oh we'll probably find out maybe something at the game awards if we didn't find it out at e3 they might say something at the game awards right but so my yeah. point there is th- this thing that was intended to be a celebration of the years past has been slowly transformed into yet another conference. So is it mm-hmm. almost like the industry itself needs a video game conference or else it just kind of implodes? <laughs> you know, like, do, does, do we, we need that or else we can't it, play video games? It just keeps getting reinvented. Yeah. We keep reinventing the conference. Well, because, I mean, it didn't just happen by, like, it wasn't blueprinted. It's definitely, like, transformed over the years to be what it is, right? Mm. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, to be honest with you, I mean, with the Game Awards stuff, someone like me who and well, all three of us really who, who are like super plugged in to everything that happens in gaming discourse throughout the year anyway, and what new games are coming out, etc. Like. It's cool that they're getting these awards, but honestly, in terms of like knowing to get the awards, I could give a fuck. Tell me about the new game announcements like. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. I could be like, "Oh, that's cool that he's got the, these awards, and it's gonna be it's gonna do wonders for like, you know, these games becoming more well known, like people hearing about them, etc." And that's great. But for me, in terms of like the information that I want, like I want to hear about the new games. Like mm. I, I'm not here for the awards. I'm here. I'm here for the new games. I'm gonna be honest. Was it the Game Awards that we heard about the Elden Ring? Yes. For the first time? Yeah, I think Keely is pretty yes. closely tied to El- I would not be surprised if there's an a Keely NPC in Elden Ring. That's how close I, yeah. I tie him to that game. Cuz and then the, and then before that when we all thought Death Stranding was going to be absolutely which it is absolutely revolutionary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're P at monsters. Um anyway, uh that was very at, we found out a lot about that through the game awards yeah yeah initially so. Mm-hmm. yeah so i guess that's where one thing i'm seeing it from whereas i just feel like i mean colin you're kind of clearly demonstrating right that like as as people who play video games as gamers we kind of are always craving the next new shiny thing yeah. right and that goes hand in hand with well we've got to have a ton of conferences to accommodate that right um, the second major trend that I think is attributing to especially the more, let's say, creative presentations is Twitch. This is just the fact that you can be a Twitch streamer, a Twitch personality on YouTube, too. Right. But like it's now popular to be a live streamer and to like have a name that people know, like Ninja. Right. Like mm-hmm. people want to watch other people around video games. And that's the kind of energy I've been getting, especially from like Microsoft's recent outings. Right. It's like they kind of Mm. want to capture that energy of like, hang out with us on stream while we show you trailers and advertise to you. And we're all going to spam GTA six in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even the negative press in the Twitch chat and like the people like being shitty in the chat. I mean, it's still eyes on the the products that these companies are putting out. Right. So like to them, it it doesn't really make a difference. Um, Yeah. I mean. Obviously, Xbox is being much more community forward forward and that. I mean, that's working really well for them and it's helping them carve out their own space in, in the gaming space. I will say, too, that, I, I mean, you know, with the Game Awards, um, just to kind of put a bow on what I was saying earlier, it's and it's not that I don't care that there are awards like if there were a Game Awards show 
and it was just the awards pretty much and that was it like i would probably still watch it it's just that like or may or maybe at the very least like tune in for part of it but if it, like now that you've placed on the table like oh no, but we also have world premieres you know and it's like oh okay well fuck like <laughs> you have world premieres like you you you're putting those out there now like of course yeah yeah i want those those more than the awards Mm, yeah. I want to hear that deep, deep voice say "world premiere." Yeah, yeah, world premiere. Can't Thank wait you. for Jeff Goldblum to say it too. I still yeah, have exactly. That sound bite ah, we—that's a good sound bite to have. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we have that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, th I think it does say a lot that when I think about game awards, the the game awards, right? That the most important headline the day after is usually a toss up between what game won the game award or versus Elden Ring announced at the game awards. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like that latter headline kind of goes against the spirit or at least it defeats the intended spirit. Maybe I guess I can't speak to that. It's kind of up to Jeff. Right. But it just does feel a little weird that even the show that is supposed to not necessarily be about game reveals is now pretty much about game reveals right yeah yeah and, totally but it gets people to tune in right yeah so so but now we're looking back on the summer right so sure game game announcements get people to tune in but i would be very curious to see like what were the twitch numbers what were the youtube numbers right for for all of these i'm sure you know like I, what was it that i think nintendo was the most viewed with like three million live viewers yeah, at the time, right? I remember discussing that. Right, but then as you go down the list, I'm sure that there are unfortunately a lot of conferences that just go kind of missed, you know? Like, for one, lower numbers, and then two, how many of those people actually watching have absorbed all of that information and retain it still in September, mm. right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I think the answer is, like, a happy medium. I think it's it somewhere along the point that you made earlier, Robert, about uh consolidating a lot of these conferences right i mean because it straight up there were a lot of conferences that weren't really conferences they were just trailers or commercials for games we already knew about or games that already had release dates i mean that's that all that is to say i mean yes every conference is technically a commercial for games that are coming out yes. so don't get yeah. don't, like we, i don't want to get that twisted yeah, they're, they're all we uh, want they're them all to be more informational yeah. than right promotional mm -hmm. Right. And that's exactly it. I mean, it's just if you're a conference and you're not presenting any new information, then you shouldn't have a conference. You're just you're just adding bloat. You're just adding, you know, you're you're dirty. You're muddying the waters is what I'm trying mm. to say. Yeah. Like, could you imagine, you know, like not video games, like let's let's take something more serious, like a new policy decision was announced at City Hall. Oh my right? god. Like that level of serious municipal boring ass shit. Could you imagine if the mayor of your town came out and was like, all right, guys, I'm going to hold a press conference. I have nothing new to say. I have no information to be added or revealed. I'm just kind of standing here with, with the podium for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about- The other city did it. Yeah. So I need to. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about those policies that I passed like- well, actually, that would be helpful. I'm going to talk about these policies that we've had in place for like a year already. That, that you're all very familiar with. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Yeah, so that that does, I, I think there's definitely a point there, right? I think the poster child to, for that point, Colin, in my mind is the Capcom E3 event, right? Because Absolutely. And, and I don't want to give them too much flack because Capcom has been fucking killing it the past few yeah. years, right? Like, yeah. Man, yeah. Game after definitely. game has been like knocking it out of the park. But, you know, I think this is one of the E3s where they could have just been resting on their Resident Evil 8 laurels and just kind of coast. They should have just showed the puppet show that was in Japan, but for some reason we didn't get it in America where it's just all the, the lords from the game and their puppets and mm. like Muppet puppets. Oh, that's good. It's great. Yeah. It's wonderful. I'll have to look that up because I, I didn't even know about that, but that sounds great. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I think though too, it, if these conferences, you know, if these get out of the way, you know, get out of the press, the, and that's just more room for things like indie games to breathe. That's what, that's what upsets me. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're like, you're now, you're just, you're just there to just take up 
air, you know, like you're just eating up the air in the room when like, you know, that's just a little bit more press that this indie game over here could have gotten. You know, it might not Stop be a, talking that shit much about more. me. I'm allowed to exist and breathe. <laughs> yeah. well, and also counterpoint, Colin, there have I'm this is a gut check from me, but I feel like there have been almost as many indie conferences in the past four months as there have been big triple A events. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying there hasn't been a lot of them. There certainly has been. I'm just saying that, like, you know, something like a Capcom or a Bandai Namco conference is just taking, you know, valuable press space that could be otherwise taken up by, you know, game over here that got overlooked. That's actually good. Mm. You know, right. Slime Rancher 2. Exactly. Now, it's funny you say Bandai Namco because my brain did a little brain blast. I remember exactly what was at the Bandai Namco E3 presentation. Um, and it actually is just something that I think is also another part of the problem with with conferences, right? Is that so everyone loves a one more thing, right? Like that's kind of a, a joke at this point, right? Like it's a little yeah. cutesy little, oh, we've got one more thing, right? And then the, the big reveal, the crazy whatever, right? Bandai Namco showed, I want to say 15 to 20 minutes of the new Dark Pictures anthology game, the one that was That's like that's right. set in a rock, I think. Yes. Yes. Um, and it wasn't even just straight up gameplay. It was like a dev interview, like your classic over the shoulder, you know, two sofas facing each other. And they made it very fucking clear that this event is just about Dark Pictures anthology, right? They did. That's true. They made it very clear. And my stupid ass gamer brain was still like, there's got to be a one. There's going to be a one more Tekken 8, maybe, <laughs> you know? And it's weird that that expectation is like, my brain just places that expectation on them because everyone else is doing it. Right? Yeah. So were you disappointed? I mean, yeah, but like, I only have myself to blame, you know? Yeah, that that's true. I mean, yeah, that definitely gets into the the um discussion of of managing expectations. Uh I mean, even with the PlayStation conference that you guys will likely see later today or maybe already have seen by the time you're listening to this. Um I mean, they were explicitly clear that there's going to be no PSVR news. Mm-hmm. Like none. And that's the stuff that a lot of devs and a lot of publishers have had to do. They've had to start telling people up front that like Hey, this, <laughs> you know, this is what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, so. I remember uh, mentioning in our previous E3 podcast about how, like, Nintendo literally had to be like, okay, we don't have anything about Breath of the Wild 2 right now. Please be patient. But here's some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, very apologetic. It's like, I know, we know that's what you want, but we just don't have it right now. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's it just it puts everything in a weird place, right? Just because I think it we're no strangers to the vitriol that happens in the gaming community, and I'm sure many uh, company Twitter social people and PR people aren't strangers to it either, right? Mm. So it's just kind of a shame that those expectations need to be set out up front. But then even then, depending on the expectations, it's still kind of like, yeah, but you know, you got that one more thing, right? Like, I mean, Jeff Keighley did one. It's like how Mar- Marvel changed everything with the post credit scene, and now we're all sitting in the theater until after the lights have gone up, being like, wait, it was, wasn't there another scene? Is there another scene? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where ever since, you know, Sony had that block, and, and this is going to be a little bit of my Sony fanboy coming out, so I apologize in advance, but... You better. I don't think too many people would disagree that Sony's like, I think 2015 and 2016 Ether press conferences were like fucking just out of this world good. I mean, um, I remember, wasn't it 2016 where they just had a live orchestra and were like, yeah, we're just going to play the trailer music live right here, right fucking now is the yes. video place. Yeah, yeah. And then they announced God of War and I busted a nut. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Just so didn't need to know that. I was over here busting, as Josh yes. Weissman would say. Um, yeah, and so I don't know that like laid the foundation, like the blueprint of like exactly just how hype conferences can be, and mm. like how they how they should how they can ebb and flow 
well. I mean, obviously, they, the very strong point of like having insane titles to announce. I mean, they I mean, I, I can't remember which year was which, but I mean, obviously, one of those years was like Final Fantasy seven remake. One of those years was Shenmue three, which obviously Shenmue three. We know how that panned out, but it was a big deal at the time. Yeah. Um, at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, and other stuff that I'm probably forgetting. I don't know. Horizon, maybe. Mm. Um, yeah. So like all that stuff was just. It, it built up a lot of people's expectations to be like, holy fuck. Now that was a conference. That's how you do it. You know? Um, mm. And so now it's it's like chasing the dragon with drugs or something like that. People are like, man, just got to get another one of those. Just got to have just got to have another one. Nothing ever be said. That's, you know. Yeah. Like, how do you top that? You know, exactly. And and it's funny to me, because if you'll if you'll notice, if you're on Twitter uh, at all in, in part of the gaming discourse, you'll see after every like major conference or any conference of any consequence. Jeff Keighley will tweet out like, hey, what did you guys think of A, B, or C conference? And he has like mm. a, an alphabetical rating, you know, and people had like, it's it's pretty telling when people are like, they see this conference and they're like, oh, that was like a C tier conference. Absolutely. And more often than not, like a, the majority vote on those, like I'm usually poised to agree. So I don't know what that says about me or the general gaming discourse, but it's true. Well, you know, so I wonder if we're we're all very critical as gamers, I feel, too. Yeah, C for critical, right? But yeah, I also think part of that is like, that's just like your opinion, man, dot gif, right? Because yeah, I mean, true. I yeah. mean, so so you really, really like that Sony conference where they revealed all those cool Sony exclusives that you can only play on your Sony video game box, right? But yeah, I grew up only playing the Halo machine and I only play on my Xbox and stuff. So I don't care about God of War. So that conference is a C tier to me, right? That's not true for me, but like the it's all different strokes because of the video game industry and the video game community is so diverse, right? That like what excites one person about any given conference is going to be wildly different from another person, right? For the most part. I think the only thing that'll oh, unify shit. all the gamers is GTA 6. But you know, it's, <laughs> it, I think this is generally like it's it's good to like have those really good conferences. But I think many people don't divorce their personal like the thing I'm personally excited about from whether or not that conference was good or bad. Right. From just like a production. Yeah, you're, presentation. you're probably going to be more forgiving with your favorite mm -hmm. studios as opposed to like, wow, you could have done better microsoft yeah or sony or a nintendo yeah but you're gonna be like but i love bandai namco so i thought the uh dark pictures interviews were neat yes exactly that's what many gamers thought for sure yes i mean I, yeah i get the argument that like to a degree it's it's just a matter of perspective and what your likes and dislikes, just your dislikes opinion, are man. just like your opinion man um and you know guy over here or girl over here is going to get a lot more out of a b or c conference than other person over there um but i, I don't know I, I just i feel like that you can't there are certain things where it's just like objectively like there was a lot of games there those are a lot of big budget titles those are a lot of game like titles that have a lot of fanfare behind them mm -hmm. you know um and like you can't like even if they're not for you you know there's a certain objectivity there where you have to say like that was a very strong conference you know right. what i'm saying like uh, like assuming that you're you know plugged in if you're just someone who's like a you know a casual gamer or you like you just know what you like that's what you look for you know i totally get it but yeah you know if you're people like us you know that are very involved i mean that there's just times when you got to say like you know xbox had a really good conference you know they really hit on like the they really hit the beats that they needed to hit you know mm. I, last generation for xbox was was fairly weak in terms of games releases and now they're getting wins with game pass etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah i mean and i don't want to say like oh that playstation conference wasn't as good as everyone says it is like obviously it was very good like i'm a music nerd i love the fact that they fucking like live orchestra the whole shebang that was cool right yeah and i think a sign of a good conference from a more like as much of an objective place as it can come from is when you walk into a conference thinking i'm probably not going to buy any of the things or play any of the things and you walk away being like am i an xbox fanboy now 
Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, actually, I'm going to play that. Right. Yeah. And I, I think Microsoft's been doing that very well recently. Right. Cool. But. I think we should probably start bringing this to a close. I want to start looking forward, much like all these fucking conferences do, right? The future of game conferences is still... We're still going to get them. We're still going to get a fuck ton of them. I'm sure E3 oh, yeah. next year, whether that's in person or pandemic, uh, you know, virtual again. Who knows? Because Florida's a thing. But uh, <laughs> what do you guys envision or want out of future game conferences do you want the volume slime of slime rancher 2 slime rancher 2 okay daily's chimed in her answer colin do you want <laughs> the volume of these to stay the same tighten up a bit more maybe like tweaks like what what do you want in the future of game conferences yeah def definitely definitely tighten up the screws a little bit consolidate them make them tighter i don't know what you got to do if you need to like partner up with each other or what um if you don't have anything to show just please don't or make it an Tweet. email or go to the press about it. Like it, it, you're not doing anyone any favors other than, I mean, okay. They're, they're, sure. There's the argument of like any press is good press, even if it's negative press, but like you're, you're wasting a lot of people's time if you don't have anything new to show. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to see. I mean, the nostalgic kid in, in me wants, you know, wants to go back to those six original conferences or what have you, or the six conferences we had for such a long time and, you know, have people awkwardly stand up on stage and, and st stagger and stammer. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I think, though, the the way th those are going the way of the Dodo, we're getting more of the like, Nintendo Direct like formats I'll in the state of play. So those aren't going to dare go, you invoke go that sacred name, the Dodo. What? The dodo. the dodo yes poor thing mm -hmm. yep so more nintendo directs are happening basically from other pub other publishers and other whatnot. directs yeah yeah i think i think i'm on the same uh wavelength as you except for obviously uh more information about slime rancher too so daily just wants the slime rancher direct yes yeah. mm -hmm. i mean i want more information of course about the games that i care about for the rest of you, I don't know. I think Google slime, it. Slime Rancher needs to team up <laughs> with Dragon Quest so they can have actual slimes in the game. Mm -hmm. Aha. Yeah, I think I'm in a similar boat. I think too. It. I maybe this is a personal reflection too, and maybe something like the game community maybe needs to look at as well. But it's like, what do we expect out of game conferences nowadays, right? Because like, obviously the the people who set the tempo and pace for these conferences are the publishers. Everything you mm. see there has been calculated from a business perspective, like what do we want the most eyes on so that way they'll buy our shit, right? It's the same reason you right. still see like For Honor updates sometimes, right? Like at these events or like I remember Ooh. what's uh, that bike game tra trail Trials Rising, Trails Rising? The, the it Ubisoft. was one of the trials games. There's several Tri of them. Yeah, trials. Yeah, the, yeah, so that Ubisoft bike game. I feel like we've seen, we've seen that at multiple Ubisoft conferences because there have been multiple major updates for it, right? And, mm, you know, back in the they're day... They're keeping it alive. Right, and like back in the day, it was like, well, did you buy Final Fantasy VII or did you not? End of story. But here it's like, okay, maybe you didn't buy Trials Rising day one, but we've got the sick new uh, expansion. Maybe you want to jump in now. Give us some money for that, right? And... That's what these conferences are for, too. They're to mm. give those sorts of moments a big platform, mm. right? So, I don't know. As, as a consumer, right, as someone who probably will never play Trials Rising, that's disappointing to see Ubisoft spend time on that. But for the big wigs in Ubisoft, when they're not busy harassing women, that's a good thing for them, right? Because they're getting more people to see the thing they want. So, is it now up to us as consumers to kind of level set our expectations to really consider okay like i do want those kick-ass conferences like sony 2016 but sony was just lucky maybe and that all of the things that the business people wanted you to see were all of the things you were excited about right is that maybe what mm. was happening in that magical year and ever since then not quite as many home runs maybe yeah and to be fair i mean 
Sony pulled out all the stops and almost to their detriment during that conference because a lot of those games didn't come out for a very long time after that conference was older, uh, like was over. So they mm. were showing stuff that was very early in development. And there's a lot of publishers out there that could easily pull together something like that if they really wanted to, i.e. Nintendo. Um, I, you know, because Nintendo, I mean, their trend for the past, I don't know, maybe five years has been like, we're going to announce a game is coming to our console, the Switch. And it's coming out after this conference or it's coming out a yeah. few months down the line after this, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's very seldom with the exception of like probably Zelda that it's like longer than a year that we have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. It's both. Both both are exciting. I love the and it's available right now. And I also like, oh, this is the, they're like just now starting this. But now I know mm-hmm. that yeah. that's something to look forward to down the line. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good to know about things. I'm definitely in the camp of like announce it to me when it's like only four months out, um, because then I don't have to wait very long. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Nintendo Directs are a good example too of what I'm thinking about because it's like for the most part, many Nintendo rec- Nintendo Directs are built around one game, like that the big you know home run hitter, right? It's usually the one more thing, right? But then yeah. a lot of the stuff up before it, not not to like slight any of those games, but you know, clearly Oni Naki is not going to have as big of an audience who'd get excited about it as they would about Breath of the Wild 2, right? But you can't just have a 40 minute Nintendo Direct that's like Pokemon 9th Gen and then Breath of the Wild 2 and then Metroid Prime 4 and, you know, because like that's just not going to happen unless suddenly all of Nintendo Studios got together and like did all that and like prepped for it to just have one banger of a year, right? Right, right. Yeah, the, yeah. like I said before, they, they could have easily just blown their load that way, the way Sony did. Um, mm-hmm. Remember you know, Scalebound? I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Why do you keep invoking these dirty names? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Metroid Prime 4 seems like it's never going to come out because that thing was, it's rebooted development, I don't know, at least once mm-hmm. at this point, so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I think... This is a good place for us. Wait, one more. Th- no, I'm kidding. We don't have one more thing. Oh, it's, my gosh. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> I wish we had one more thing. Uh, but no, we don't. Uh, that's that's the end of this this pretty long episode. It's almost as long as an Xbox conference. Whoa. It, it might actually, we did it on purpose. It, exactly. To the second. Um, but let us know what you think about games conferences in general. Are you still like really excited about them? Or are you kind of just as tired as we are? Like, you know, maybe not in a bad way, but it's just like, man, it is a lot. Like, woof, my brain can only take so much, right? Let us know what you're thinking. You can email those things to us at uh, everythinginpod at gmail.com. Or you can comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube right now. Or you can tweet at us at everythinginpod. Or uh, where else are we? Uh, do we announce our OnlyFans? <laughs> <Do you? gasps> oh, that not is a that is one more thing. <laughs> oh, one more thing, guys. <laughs> we have an OnlyFans. There's no content currently on there. Um, we'll probably put on our d- d- what you're able to get for free on there for free. But uh, let us know on ye old Twitter. Um, I, I believe I tweeted something out. What kind of uh, content would you want to see on there, theoretically? Mm-hmm. Theoretically. Yeah. Or we, actually. We make no guarantees. There, it was, we did it yeah, on a there's, whim. There's things within our power and uh, comfort level that we can post. Um, With various like levels pictures of, of cats. Yeah. With cats. Yeah. Um, sure, you can expect that. If anyone wants to pay for pictures of cats, I can provide pictures of cats. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we did get one request for pussy cat pics. I think the. I, I mean, I. I have, I mean, I can do feet pics and I can post pictures of my video game collection if you want to see that, I guess. If you're listening whoa, to this, you probably... Whoa, getting racy yeah, here. Yeah, getting really hot. racy. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you can watch me take some plastic off some new games that I've never played. How's that sound? All right, look forward to that. Yeah. Check us out yeah. on OnlyFans at Everything in Pod. Hey, actually, actually, Colin, real talk, how much would it take to like for you to unwrap the plastic off of a sealed old copy of a video game that you own for only fans uh, i well <laughs> i don't have anything that's like i don't know a fucking copy of stadium events or something for the nes okay it's like I, yeah i don't i don't think i have anything like that wait mm? 
Wait. Mm -hmm. I have I have a sealed copy of Otogi 2 for the original Xbox. I think that's the original that's the closest thing I got to that. And uh right, if you how, want to see him denude. Uh, if you want to <laughs> name your price. <laughs> that, that's what they call it, right? Denude it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you fuckers make me do that's like it's a two hundred dollar game now, I think, on eBay. So so you have to pay at least that much to get a video yeah, call. So you gotta you gotta it. pay double what that game's worth if you mm -hmm. want to see me do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that should do it for this week's episode of Everything in Potteration. We'll be back next week and you can tune in then. See ya. Yeah.